The next option in Material Editor, it's a bump map. You notice currently we have it zero, so we don't have any bump map applied to our material. You know what, let's go take our camera. Just slightly move right here so we can preview. Okay, now we can go ahead and open back our editor. So we'll go to um, bump map on our material. And what I want to do is just edit function. And you can see we have a quite a bit complex function already there. Instead, let's go just preload it. And I'm going to um, select which one. Let's go to bump maps right here. We'll select one with kind of lines. It does not apply it any. We cannot see it because it's a zero depth. So if we put a 10, let's over exaggerate it. You'll see right here we start having these bump maps. One thing about bump maps that it is um, just work with the lights and shadows on a light projection. If you look on the side, it does not affect shape at all. So it's only work on how light render with the shadows. So example, let's go just even select total different ones. And you notice right here, see how it's changed. If we want to change shape, we need apply displacement. Before do this, let's go check again. We have a preview on our bump material. We can have it scale. We also can go inside the function and modify it directly. We have a depth. It's what I currently did. Put it a large depth on the depth. We also have a bump map scale. Currently, we're using world standard. You remember what I said? If we're using one image, you probably want to use object parametric. As we switch this, you can see how much it's changed now. So it's much smaller and applied. We also can go ahead and switch bump scale. So let's put 2.1, 0.1, and 0.1. So you notice right here, as I change scale, now it's much smaller, so we can preview. Okay, this is a bump scale. Um, if we have it previous, you'll notice additional option will be add underlaid bump material. So if we have it any layers, we can pass the bump effect from the bottom. But because it's a base one, we don't have these options. Next, we have it options to displacement of material, uh, displacement mapping. And what it does, it's actually take this bump map and will apply to change shape of the object. We will use displacement mapping quite a bit often when we create our rocks, want to create some realistic terrain arches. This is a very nice option to use displacement mapping on the meta blobs. So let's enable, and as I enable, you can see it's go all wacko because our depth is very high. So I'm going to reduce to the two, and you can see in a preview our shape of the object now change. So, and it's because it's displacement. Let's take this from the normals and apply it. So let's look at the properties of our displacement. We have it, our smoothness. Right now we have it a little bit hard edges. So if you feel they're too hard, we can apply smooth and it will just make those angles just a little bit look better. We can increase also quality boost as well. Right here, you can see right now it says along the normal, but you can apply horizontal only displacement. So it will be just right here apply on the horizontals we can switch verticals only and it will be smooth right there you can see only verticals again right now this is because object parametric and my object was rotated so i can actually put it a little bit more this way so we can preview right here okay um so it's vertical only horizontal other ones we also can Go well, if you have a normal map, we can do by the normal map or a custom. And for example, I used filter forge to create some of the textures, and I can produce normals also. And in this case, I just import normal map and use it. If you don't have it, you always can just use it um, along normals. And also, as well, right here, you see we have a displacement. So, what if you have just one image and I want applied displacement? based on what we had. So I can modify my function, okay? I say don't get scared on this because we'll come back to this. 
Okay, we can take our displacement. Okay, basically appear right here. And we can just connect. To our so on this click we we'll click OK. We probably want to invert, but you can see right here the ridge is going. And let's go maybe decrease to 0.5 because we have it quite a bit noisy. But right here you can see how it's already look much nicer. Okay, displacement. Let's go switch back to one one. Okay, so in this case. It's look a little bit better with lines, but overall you can see how we change actual shapes. Okay, next we can force extensions if we're going a little bit out. Uh, move ecosystem. This will apply if we populate with ecosystem and the shape is changed. If we don't move ecosystem, the some object maybe start flowing in the air, does not going. But if we enable, it's mean it's take the calculations of the new normals and place it those objects on the surface even after displacement um, displace outwards only so right now you can see it's going down below if we do this way right this area you can see it does not going down so it will go only out okay currently i don't want it i want to put it this way okay we have it um, effect material distribution if we have it, any materials we apply after we want to distribute them accordingly so this is how the everything affected most time it will be disabled because we don't use it for example right now distribution I don't worry about this if you want to add additional bump map to displacement service we can enable this and place additional um, lighting but remember bump maps won't change surface it just change how the lighting is rendered okay and we can limit it subdivisions if we have a too many polygons created one smaller so we can enable this also we can always create a depend on a slope so in this case depend on a angle we can preset what we want it so let's disable that we'll leave it as a default okay this is a kind of bump map production and um, in the future we will work quite a bit with creating because it's add a nice look and on the rocks almost always we will use a displacement mapping 